Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna have a pretty quick video I think here for you today as we're gonna talk about sort of the old tradition of dice baseball and kind of what happened with it. Um, I'm kind of starting to wrap my head, head around this um, as well. So uh, dice baseball, believe it or not, is um, something that is much older than the concept of say uh, playing national pastime or playing app or anything like that. Um, there was a, a pe period of time um, in the history of the app journal um, in which uh, the uh, editors and other contributors of the Apple Journal were looking to try to figure out exactly where everything came from. Now, I don't want to uh, necessarily cast aspersions of too many people, but you get the feeling when you look back that um, there was this feeling among some that there's no possible way that Clifford Van Beek uh, could have invented a game as complex as National Pastime. In fact, it's not just a feeling that you get. There are people like Robert Henry who said that um, explicitly on the app of Between the Lines message board uh, back when um, he was uh, still alive. And so... Um, the App Journal did do a little bit of research back starting around, I think, the mid-90s into what games could have been the predecessors or the forerunners of, uh, of uh, national pastime. <clears throat> there was a game that the App Journal focused on called Fanitis. Now, I've never played Fanitis, nor do I have any um, interest in playing it. Um, but the thing about fanitis that seemed to sort of set it apart is the fact that um, you had two dice and the numbers were combined instead of having two dice that were combined or added together, um, which I suppose is similar to uh, national pastime and how the dice are read at first. The difference, though, of course, when you read about it, I have a blog post out today about this, actually, um, is that uh, national pastime is a game that involves that sort of two dice systems or 36 total possible combinations and a player card and then the boards. These other dice baseball games would just have the dice rolls that would um, lead to certain uh, <clears throat> results on a uh, board itself. So we'll go ahead and look at this. Fortunately for us, there is a website called baseballgames.dreamhoster.com Com. I don't know how long this site will be around. I have a funny feeling that this is going to be one of those sites that may end up disappearing after a couple of years, just based upon sort of the way that it's written and, and things like that. There are photos here of all sorts of different baseball board games, and there's a very, very interesting text that you can read. Um, you know, we're all bifocal, wearing longtime AARP members here, blah, blah, blah. But um, the truth, and that's the reason why I think the site might not be around forever, so go over to archive.org, make sure this one is preserved. Uh, but the uh, truth about this is that um, they have some very, very interesting comments um, within their text about the long history of these dice baseball games, the idea of rolling um, one or two dice or sometimes three together to produce um, results that you then use your imagination to work your way around. As I look into this, I realize that um, uh, some of these games are even older than um, the uh, games that uh, I thought National Pastime's original, um, uh, that, uh, that I thought the National Pastime originally was based on. I'm looking here at this one called Our National Ball Game, Ball Game which was designed in 1885 by Edward uh, K. McGill. Um, which is uh, one of the first baseball games ever to employ dice for player results. So the thing, the way that I think about this, and we'll go back to this page here in a second, the way I think about this is sort of the way that we talk about playing like paper football. You ever play this in school? I played this not all the time, but every once in a while, if there was like a free period, or if you're sitting there in math and you're with some guy who doesn't want to pay any attention, right? And you got the little... Uh, Thing, piece of paper that's folded up just right and you can flick it so that it's like you're kicking a field goal and then the other guy goes up there like this and uh, holds the uh, upright steady and then you see who wins and who loses, right? That's sort of the way that um, dice baseball is, right? It's a very, very basic game. There's really nothing scientific to it, right? You, you roll some things and then certain combinations give you like a double or a single or a triple or a home run or whatever. It's going to be a little bit difficult for you to see this, but um, right here is a board for the first baseball game, uh, which would show that you would roll two dice. You would take the lowest number first, and uh, because the dice are of the same color, and the highest number second. And so an 11 would be a, a double. 12, 13, 14 is a one base hit, and all the way down to 66, which is a home run. And then there are a bunch of results that are outs, right? A foul, foul out, there's a base on balls, there's one strike. Interestingly enough, there's not one ball. There's also one, one five is base on an air and stuff like that. That's sort of where this idea, I think, originally comes from, right? And there's all of these different um, explanations of this. Oh, look, there's one even older, the league parlor baseball game 
from 1884 used one die, which had numbers one, two, three, four, and then um, two zeros that would turn it into the other side. One's a single, two's a double, three's a triple, four's a home run, and then the zeros would make would mark three outs, right? So you're going to hit, he has the averages of figured out here, you're going to hit 400, you know, and so on and so forth. Pretty cool uh, site, and we can sort of scroll down through this. There are games missing here, and I will talk tomorrow about one of the big games that were missing um, but uh, as you can see, all of these are based upon the same idea, which is that you roll two dice and you take the lowest of the first roll as the first number, which means that there will be only one result that starts with a six and only one result that has six possibilities. That would be uh, if you rolled a one. Um, pretty interesting. You can get into this. We could talk about um, different um, variations of this. I imagine that this is probably similar to what uh, Hal Richmond played um, and was messing around with himself when he first thought of Stratomatic and thought of different ways that um, uh, stuff can uh, that he could set stuff up. There's even a form for dice baseball that we could go into and uh, uh, become really interested in. So it's really interesting though to think about this because in many ways our sports simulation hobby goes way back to the earliest days of baseball. I mean, we're talking 1884, right? I mean, this is before um, necessarily the ball and strike numbers were um, codified, right? So this is going way, way back in the history of the game. Um, and it sort of is a little bit of a proof to us that, um, you know, this hobby that we enjoy is not necessarily something that's brand new. Now, there are people who look at this and who wonder why in the world an adult like me would want to play a dice-based baseball game, right? In fact, we had, um, we've had hecklers in the YouTube comments already. Um, part of the reason why is because it's fun, but part of it is also because there is some scientific curiosity that comes along with this. Now, you're not going to see that in the old dice baseball games. None of these games, if you're used to playing, you know, replay, stratomatic, especially like Dynasty League Baseball, you go back to a game like this and you're going to be like, this isn't fun. After about two innings, you're going to be done because you've seen everything, right? Um, but I would say that definitely Clifford Van Beek was probably looking to this uh, type of game as like the origin of what he was creating. The truth is that if you look at Fanitis or the Great American Pocket Baseball game or any of these other games, it doesn't really matter which one you play, right? The results may be slightly different, but the mechanics are essentially the same. That's what's going on. Um, and there's your video quickly for today. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I think that it's interesting. I think it's very interesting that we have this uh, tradition that goes back this far. Um, having said that, um, I'm not entirely convinced that um, there's a... Uh, uh, that there's a lot to this. In other words, I don't think that uh, because this was tradition, we can um, necessarily conclude that, oh, like uh, Jay Richard Seitz, um, Clifford Van Beek just copied off of some other man's game. I don't think it's quite that simple. What I do think is true is that um, uh, Clifford Van Beek was probably inspired by some of these games that were floating around, but I do not think that it's possible that um, something as complex as National Pastime had existed before. If you know of anything that I don't, definitely let me know. Next time we're going to talk, uh, so tomorrow we're going to talk about um, a game that um, I would argue was probably the closest thing to the inspiration for National Pastime that we've had. Um, so we'll go take a look at that one tomorrow, and uh, I will talk to you then. Bye-bye.